Well, it's midsummer. I'm getting ready for a whole nother suite of frog calls. We've come a little before dark to see if we can see a few frogs. What do we have here? A lively little frog. This green frog looks like it just metamorphosed. It's so small. Let's let this one go. Kind of hoping to find a bullfrog. They don't spend their whole life in the frog stage. They also have that pollywog stage. Also called tadpole stage. Oop, there are some of the tadpoles now. See them out resting on the, on the mud. The frog can keep growing larger and larger in the aquatic environment. And the bigger it is, the less likely something else is going to eat it. Now the salamander larvae are carnivorous when they're in the water. But the frog larvae, the tadpoles, they're herbivorous. They're not going to eat meat matter, just plant matter. Now the frogs have a complex life cycle. Each of those steps, the egg, the tadpole, and then the frog is completely different animal almost as far as what they eat and how they behave and where they live. And during each of those transitions, the frog is particularly susceptible to environmental pollutants. That's one reason that people call frogs indicator species. When the animal is partway transitioning from the tadpole to the frog, there are a lot of hormones that are telling the frog's body what to do. So if we have any artificial hormones in the environment, it could mess up what happens to the frog. So you can hear there's a lot more calling frogs here. So let's go take a look at it a little closer. There's a whole chorus of green frogs. You can hear them. Some people say they sound like banjo strings being plucked like they're the ones going down, 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 down. And then in the distance, you can also hear the bullfrog. It's going, it's more of a rumbling, longer call, like I'm gonna put on my flashlight and see if I can find one of the frogs. I think my boots are too shallow. I'm gonna get wet. That's okay. Oh, I see it. I see it. Oh, there's this pretty dorsal mammal red just going right down his back. Even if this one wasn't singing, we know it was a male because his tympanum, that big dark circle behind the eye, is much larger than the eye. I hear those two bullfrogs playing off each other. They're not too close to each other. They have different territories in which they feed and they also stake out territories for egg laying. It's just the male frogs that are calling these advertisement calls. It's pretty much only the male frogs that ever make sound except there's occasionally a distress call that some frogs will give. The bigger the body, the deeper the pitch is possible. Also, the warmer the night, the faster the rate is possible. It's a little cooler now than the first place that we went to, so they're not quite as fast as they could be, but it's still a pretty warm night. Both the bullfrogs and the green frogs need bodies of water that are going to keep water in them throughout the summer and the winter. In contrast, the gray tree frog, like its name suggests, it lives up in the trees. They have those, like all the other tree frogs, they have those big padded toad disks and they use it to climb the trees. But then when it comes time to lay eggs, it has to be somewhere moist. And around here, our trees aren't that moist. So they come down to the bodies of water and lay their eggs there. Camouflage, that's their method of safety. 
they have that gray, knobbly color. And so if you see one, it's often kind of flattening down, being very still, and pretending to, to blend in with whatever surroundings around. I can hear the frogs all around me. It's kind of a special time of year for many of us. We like that juggerama bullfrogs and the sounds of green frogs. <laughs>